All right, um, this is a uh, beginner's tutorial on Pure Data. I hope you enjoy it. Obviously, the first thing you're going to need to start on this tutorial is a copy of Pure Data. Let's go ahead and make a new file here, and we'll get started. Okay, we're now at the main window, and the first thing I'd like to cover is the two modes you'll be using while uh, in Pure Data. Um, let's go ahead and show you the rest of this. The first mode you're going to be using is uh, going to be the uh, edit mode. And if you go to the edit menu, which you can't see right now, uh, there we go. It'll allow you to switch between the two modes. Let's go ahead and click that. Now, the first mode we're in is a uh, run mode. And when you're in run mode, it's going to show up as a uh, cursor. Uh, run mode lets you play with variables um, and tweak sliders, stuff like that. So basically, run mode is when you're running it. Okay, and the other mode you're going to be using is the uh, edit mode. Edit mode is uh, basically when you're going to be putting your patch together, doing your programming. The majority of your work is going to be done in edit mode. So the edit mode is the finger, and the run mode is the uh, pointer. So now we have that out of the way, you can make objects. It's in the put menu. You can uh, go down to object there. And the keyboard shortcuts come in handy because you're going to be doing this a lot. First object we're going to make is called a DAC object, digital audio controller. And that's going to take your output and spit it out. You just type it right on in there. Make sure you have the tilde. The tilde means it's going to be an audio rate object rather than control rate. We'll get to that later. And the next object we're going to make is an oscillator. This is going to make some noise uh, eventually. Now, I would recommend if you're doing this at home or wherever, um, you're going to want to uh, turn the volume down a bit because this is going to put it out as loudly as possible because it's going to oscillate from one to negative one. So basically, full volume. Um, right now it's not making any noise because we have to turn it on. So, let's go ahead and turn the audio on in the media menu. It's right there. Also, it's good to know those keyboard shortcuts again in case something goes wrong. And there we go. We have our first audio from Pure Data in not too much time. So, let's go ahead and turn the audio off again to save you some sanity. Um, would it be really nice to be able to change this pitch with, uh, I'm typing it in. Um, the OSC, uh, 440, that's A. But uh, we can go ahead and change that with a number box. Um, let's go ahead and hook that up. And by the way, when you got that little circle thing in edit mode, that means you can change it and uh, plug it in. Let's go back to our run mode so we can change the numbers. And let's turn the audio back on. And this is changing the frequency in hertz. Pretty basic stuff. Turn the audio back off. All right. And uh, next thing we'll want to do is uh, control it with a MIDI uh, frequency. So we won't be doing in Hertz, and it'll be a little bit more musical to work with. Um, <clears throat> so we're going to use MTOF, MIDI to frequency. Um, and it's just another object. And we'll be plugging it in again. And you hit backspace and stuff to delete it, by the way. All right. And now we should be able to control the uh, pitch by um, tweaking those numbers. Um, and by the way, 69 is uh, A in uh, A4 on the MIDI scale. And great. And yay, now we're at least hitting notes. Fun stuff. <clears throat> so, uh, next thing we're going to want to do is uh, check out and see what this is doing. That's another uh, great thing that the number box is uh, good for. So that way you can see the uh, frequency in hertz it's putting out, which is going into the oscillator box. Okay, uh, next thing we're actually going to want to do is create a melody. Um, first thing we need to do is actually write in the melody, so we're going to want to create an array or a table. So basically just a list of notes that we can uh, access. Um, you make this as a table in pure data, so make a table. What do you want to call it? In this case, I think we're going to call it... Um, Let's go ahead and call it, uh, uh, let's call it sticky. And we're going to want to say how long it is. Uh, in this case, uh, let's make a 16th uh, note uh, melody. All right, next thing we're going to want to do is uh, put notes into the melody. And you can do this with a message box. Let's go ahead and fire one of those up. All right, for some reason, when you make a message box, you have to go ahead and type in semicolon and hit enter to uh, start uh, writing anything in. So you go ahead and start it off with that. We're going to want to access our uh, array or table sticky. Um, zero is the location that we're going to start off at for inserting uh, data. 
Uh, and let's go ahead and write up our melody. It's going to be in a 12 tone scale. So basically your uh, melody is going to uh, start on zero. The scale will start on zero. If say you're in minor, it's going to be zero, two, three, five, seven, eight, ten, and 12 to go up the entire octave. Uh, one thing we will want to do to go ahead and put those notes into the table is actually click on it. We have to go to our uh, run mode to do that. And uh, again, you can go ahead and use the control E keyboard shortcut to do that. And we're going to want to read that out. So go ahead and make a tape read object for a table read. Put in the uh, table you want to read out. So we're going to read the sticky table and we're going to get that out of the way. So we're going to want to make a few copies of the uh, number object we have over there on the top left, holding 61. Uh, just go ahead and control C and control V that. And the nifty thing is you can move these things around without using your mouse. Uh, just go ahead and move it around with the uh, directionals on your keyboard and hold shift down to move it over. If you're uh, not holding shift down, it's going to be moving very slowly, kind of like uh, that. So let's go ahead and plug that in. And we'll want another copy of that. Plug that in. And go to your run mode and uh, change it. Now, uh, if you uh, go to uh, zero, it's going to read out the first value in that table, which was 12. There we go. And you'll notice if you go further off of it, it's not going to really do much of anything except for hold the previous value that was in there. So if you don't have anything in there, it's not going to do much. Uh, the next thing we'll want to do is add about 36 or 48 to that value just to get it in the audible range. If we had a melody going from zero to 12, when it put out the... Uh, Hertz value would be like below 60 Hertz, so you really wouldn't be hear it or would just be ridiculously thumpy. Um, so let's go ahead and add 48 to that, plug it in. And we can also make some uh, number objects so that we can uh, see exactly what that's uh, doing. And I'm just going to go ahead and make those there. Uh, copy paste uh, the objects and hold down shift and use your arrow keys to make them or you can just drag them around with the mouse. I think it's faster with the keyboard. And as soon as we go through those numbers, it should uh, show you exactly what's happening on all the boxes. So we just turn the audio on. All right, and you can see the melody being read out there. Um, unless you have a really steady hand, you're probably want to going to want to make uh, something to play it out uh, itself. So let's go ahead and make a uh, floating point variable. 